Hey, hello everyone. Uh, we are here with uh, Bernard. Um, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself in just a second. Yeah. We are on the, in the Gamification Europe Conference in Amsterdam. And yeah, Bernard, if you could just uh, say a few words who you are. And well, um, hello guys, I'm Bernard Letaif. I'm the creator of Blue Rabbit. Uh, we won the outstanding gamification software in 2017 in uh, Gamification Europe in Brighton. And well, we're now with everybody, part of the community, helping each other out to get this going. So the beautiful stuff is that you are actually tonight or last night you passed this award on to us. Yeah. We are the new winners of the outstanding gamification software. Yeah. So one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is uh, to hear how it actually changed uh, your life professionally. Uh, what happened? In For Blue Rabbit, it was an absolute uh, life-changing event. Um, after, uh, right before, uh, for me, it, it's a very special and, and very um, emo um, emotional moment because uh, I had run out of funds before the conference last year. So uh, it was my last attempt to do to kind of get something out of it and and to be able to keep going. So after I got the award, um, I got a message from a very good friend, and I got seven investment offers uh, into my company. So. Uh, it was an absolute life-changing uh, event. I got, uh, I, I, I was able to return and to stay in the gamification uh, community and into the gamification industry thanks to getting that award. So for me, it's been a life-changing event. Uh, it's been great. Um, it's, it's also got me a lot more clients and it actually gave us that push when we were literally falling. So, yeah. Because just before that you were a teacher in Mexico, is that correct? I stopped being a teacher in 2016. Okay. I was a teacher from 2008 to 2016. Okay. And uh, I quit being a teacher when I decided that I would have to give it a go to Blue Rabbit. Okay. I started using Blue Rabbit as a tool inside my classroom. Okay. And I, um, when at some point I realized this, is, uh, this could be a business, this could make money. So I should either stop being a teacher and do this for a living or forget about the tool and just keep going with the classes. And uh, I decided to get out and put it out and it's fortunately it's been success, successful and yeah. we won an award with it. So, so Congratulations. things are going right. Yeah. <laughs> and the, your presentation was amazing. And Thank you. The learning is that what connects us because we also do um, uh, gamified learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we've been exchanging in this, uh, about this conference is that it's so merit-based, it's so dense, it's a meeting of professionals rather than just uh, another uh, conference. So back to the merits of the gamification of itself. Um, some people say, I'm just trying to help our viewers uh, address the skeptics around them. Mm -hmm. So when they want to do the gamification, but they don't, might not have arguments to defend gamification idea. Okay. So one of the um, things that people say is gamification is great for a very short term. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it's great for an event maybe, but not a few weeks or a few months. Uh, how would you answer that? Can gamification be engaging for longer than just a few days? Honestly, I don't sell gamification for short term. I never sell gamification for short term. You can create a series games, you can create um, a short game, or you can create a small simulation for the short term, and that would be even more engaging yes. than a gamification strategy if the gamification strategy is not well uh, structured. You can have gamification for the short term, um, but it actually, you kind of have to put together both things because we've done gamification for events. Uh, we, we gamified Gamicon in Chicago with, oh, okay. with Blue Rabbit, um, which is a two-day event and people were engaged and, and it worked yeah. and it was a gamification strategy, yeah. but it took a lot longer and it covered the whole time of the event. It wasn't just uh, an activity between uh, for two hours of the event. Yeah. So short term, it's relative to the amount of time something is going to be running. But in terms of gamification itself, if you think that gamification is a short-term strategy, you are doing it wrong from the very start. Gamification will include games, simulations, serious games. Uh, it will include things that are not even related to games at, at, at any point. It will include psychology, it will include behavior, it will include um, neuroscience, and it will make sure that the players are engaged for as long as the event or the thing is running. So if you have a you, you want to keep a marketing uh, a marketing campaign outside for I don't know two years running and you don't use gamification you will lose track of it you will get it it will lose power midway through 
So for those of you who think that um, gamification is good for the short term, I actually would say it's wrong to use it in the short term because it would be way too expensive and you are using it in the, you're trying to use a bazooka to kill a mosquito. If you want to do something in the long run where you will track how people behave, how people um, grow and, and progress through a very strong and solid structure, then you use gamification because that's exactly what we designed the tool for. That's what gamification is for. It's tracking behavior through time and giving people what motivates them so they will engage and do it more and more and more. And um, Steve just said, if they're not coming back the second day, then why did you spend, I don't know, uh, if it, even if it's a thousand euros on, on the project, it's going to be a lot of your budget for a short-term strategy, yeah. so don't do it short-term. Yeah, so I kept nodding because, not only because I was polite, but I, we are agreeing uh, uh, with this uh, approach so deeply. Yeah. We, we do 12 months, 18 months, yes. is long, and that's the challenge for the designer. Yeah. But it's so rewarding when you actually can uh, see people coming back week after week, and, and they are getting something out of it. Uh, so, uh, but not to agree too much, just seconds before the uh, interview, we, uh, you said about the conference itself, content will always defend itself. So I could ask controversially, well, so why not just YouTube, you know? Why gamify content? Yeah. <laughs> why we add the gamification layer? Because uh, gamification itself, um, okay, here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, gamification itself is a tool on how you deliver such content. So, um, but the content itself is more powerful because if people want to learn something or are interested in something, you don't need to do anything to engage people. And that's where, where bad gamification comes uh, in, in, in the mix. Um, there are things that do not need to add engagement to because people are already engaged into it. But there are things like your job that looks really awful every day and you have to do repetitive tasks and everything. So you add some gamification to make it more engaging because maybe what you're lacking is a sense of progression. Maybe what you're lacking is a sense of connection or a sense of purpose. And that's when you gamify it. And that's why we use the term game because games do it very well. But in, in reality, what you're doing is analyzing what the player is missing and you give it to them. So you are adding content to the experience of the player. And now when they put it in context or they see, okay, the content I was missing to develop my, to, to do my, my job properly is to know how many fridge, uh, fridges I needed to sell or how many cell phones I, I, I was b below my, my quota. Uh, and when I get the numbers, then, oh my God, so I wasn't so far away and I have to wait a whole year for my evaluation report. I just keep going because I have all the information in front of us. And gamification is perfect at doing that. But yes, why not just YouTube? Why not just uh, uh, check? But y you can see how YouTube, Google, Facebook, all of those websites are every day getting even more visits. Yeah. Every day they get more people coming to it. Yeah. And I know that uh, many of the stats and, and some people trying to predict how the future is going to go, some of them are saying, yeah, but Facebook is going down because new trends come up and then they match and everything. Yeah. But people are actually in there because they put out their content to other players. What we want to do is that if you want to amplify that impact and you want your content to reach more people, then you might use a gamified strategy on how you develop that, you deploy that content to others. Uh, so the content itself will triumph over any strategy anybody does, but if you add some gamification to it because it needs it, then it will happen. You don't need to gamify news when there's an earthquake in Mexico City, all right? You don't need to gamify the news when there's new elections in a country. You, 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 the, the content itself will, will ask for it. Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more again because uh, uh, the, the, the best application of gamification is uh, gamifying habits. Something yes. that people realize and know, appreciate that it's worth doing, like jogging or, or selling a uh, if I'm a salesman. Yeah. But they somehow lack the engagement, lack the motivation, lack the progress, for example. Yeah. So that's what we are giving them. They know, so don't, we cannot gamify something that's wrong to do and people don't want to. It wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah, would it? Uh, but if they want to do it, but just don't have a willpower, you know, yeah. just fun or uh, energy just to do it. Gamification can help with that. Okay, last question. Uh, because uh, you, uh, at, the, at the moment, I understand you also uh, moved a little bit into the corporate and business world, right? Right? Out of because uh, they might be watching us, uh, people, let's say HR manager, and they wanted to, you know, bring in gamification. I think it's a excellent idea, but. 
again, there is a CEO who needs to pay for it. And um, uh, Manch was talking a little bit about that uh, yesterday. And uh, so, would you be willing to touch on that? Why is it worth to spend money on adding the layer of gamification to, to the training to, to the learning? Sorry, what? Uh, why is it uh, worth adding? Uh, ah, why is it worth adding gamification to yeah, the? Yeah. Um, How is, yeah. Okay. Worth in money. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, tangible okay. ROI. The thing is. Um, there's a lot of data uh, from former successful strategies that you can that they're no longer protected by NDAs and that you can see how uh, the, um, many strategies with gamified content got up to 7,000% increase in, in return on investment. Um, I, in my talk yesterday, I was saying that becoming a professional is a choice and it, it's, it's one where you dive in completely. And a gamified strategy, it it's kind of the same thing. So when you commit to something and you actually are uh, considering everybody to work together and to build into the content, it gives purpose, it gives focus to the whole company or to the whole marketing strategy. It takes away a lot of the noise and it just gets you to the goals. Into the zone, so it, yeah. yeah, you you can say it gets you into the zone and. You can, uh, I mean, um, Mikhail Chitsen explains pre pretty well the flow chart and how people get engaged in uh, when they match their skill with their with the difficulty of a challenge they're facing. So, the more you do that, the more you constantly challenge people to to see themselves, to, to see how they can better themselves after one and another and another. Um, I always say you will never be less than you are today because your brain is wired to always learn something new. So when you put people into a gamified environment, which is pretty much a challenge-based environment, mm -hmm. they will always want to do more. So why would you invest in it? Because you will have your players solving problems that you need solved. So uh, you will have players engaged doing the tasks you want them to do, exactly as you want them, when you want them, how you want it to do. And you yeah. all you have to do is give them a couple of restraints and you tell them, that, hey guys, we need your help with this, or hey guys, there's this problem, yep. help us solve it. And everybody's gonna be like, yeah, our brain is designed to solve problems. And uh, Steve, yeah. in, this, in the talk to in the morning, he was saying, um, I do not know of any game that at some point doesn't run out of battery, let's of say, course, like, yeah. uh, but it's because by definition, our brain is designed to decipher uh, patterns. So a game in itself, as complex as it may be, it's a pattern that your yeah. brain is, this uh, is, is just uh, yeah. untangling and fixing. We'll always find the and there, there's going to be a point okay. where you have solved it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is worth doing because yeah. it's so engaging. Yeah. We are passionate. Thank you, Bernardo, so much. Mm, we will link you. to your profile in the description, obviously. Right. So thanks again for the chat. No. And thank bye. you for the interview. Thank you.